right. Hello, everybody in YouTube world. Um, I'm not sure um, all of the social media platforms I'm going to be sharing this on just as of yet. Um, my name is Brandy, and I am here basically just to share bits and pieces of my story, my passion, my heart, inspired by many, um, many people, many mentors, many greats um, that have helped me along my journey. Some of you probably know who I am or have seen me before. I have been in social media before. I have spoken, I have taught um, before, and then I've done a little bit of a sabbatical I have been on a major journey, spiritual awakening. And so um, I just want to give a shout out to Ralph Smart. Um, you know who you are. I don't know you personally, but I've seen many of your uh, YouTube videos. Um, Infinite Waters have inspired me, have helped me on so many, so many levels. I am an empath. And um, I've just discovered so much on my journey um, that I've suffered a lot from narcissistic abuse. I was born into it. It caused me to dig deep into my background. Um, some psychotherapists, psychologists, Terry Cole, you know who you are. I don't know you personally. Um, I can just name so many different ones that I have followed you um, and have listened to a lot of your research, a lot of your videos. And um, of course, I've done a lot of my own studies. I didn't prepare for this video. This is just raw and uncut. And so with that said, it's, un it's not structured and um, it's just me. And the reason why I'm doing it in part, now at this given moment, which is today is, I wanna say it is December the 12th, 2018. Today is Wednesday, and boy, oh boy, do I have a story. I am in the city of Las Vegas, state of Nevada, and let me tell you something, okay? That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, I am not from here originally. I am from Southern California, and um, I have gone through quite a bit, let me tell you, okay? <laughs> like most people, grew up a Christian, um, I want to say originally uh, my family started out as Baptist. Um, I was born, in, I mean, I was raised by my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, um, but my parents were always around. And uh, so grew up Baptist, then it kind of got into uh, Pentecostal, I would say. And then. Um, still kind of it was still kind of Pentecostal time progressed you know had that background but let's just say an awakening I always kind of knew something as a little girl and then as time has proceeded I always felt something wasn't just quite right with life with the world right with um, my family it just felt you know odd man out always subtly right I'm not gonna get too deep into all that right now. Today, I just wanna share my passion. Um, uh, Ralph Smart is really the one that kinda inspired me about the importance of that and aligning yourself up with your, your authentic self and, and why you believe you are here and how important that is because if you're not in alignment with that and then everything else kinda just feels off and um, I lost that and as I started reflecting and looking at where I am now and some of the changes that it's that's been happening I'm like hmm I kind of lost touch with that and so I know I'm saying a lot and it's all jumbling together being um, I'm almost 43 I will be 43 in January and uh, Realizing that I grew up in environments that um, I was surrounded by a lot of narcissistic, um, toxic environments. And let me say this just as a disclaimer. I'm not here to 
look for somewhere to shift blame or say, woe is me. This is not what this is about. Okay. Just on my journey, discovering the depth of that and finding out what trauma does to a person, the effects of trauma, the, uh, uh, what they call um, long exposure to trauma, how it affects the body, uh, whether it's going to be PTSD, post-traumatic stress, or a complicated um, stress disorder, how it affects the brain, the body, the systems, right? And how that affects your mind and how that affects, you, you know, your personality and how you conduct and behave. Not only that, the subconscious. Those of you that have seen me before and that have followed me in other videos um, know that I have this fixation of neurology and psychology and I've studied it through college and have just been fixated on how it all interconnects. Finding out that the, the subconscious mind rules most of our behavior, go figure, right? When I drew the connection, that long-term um, exposure to stress under narcissistic abuse is a little different, okay? How it affects the body, the mind, the brain. How it starts to change structures of your brain, right? How you think, what you do how, um, why you get addicted, Stockholm Syndrome, like all these different things, right? I didn't know all of this, you guys. I mean, I'm just, I mean, who am I, right? Like, you know, <laughs> I didn't know any of this. I didn't know anything about a, a such thing as a narcissistic personality disorder, that it was a real thing, okay? I always thought, when I used to hear the word narcissist back in the day, to be quite honest, I always thought that that was just a word used for somebody that was just a little bit arrogant or a little bit vain. That's what I thought that was really about. I didn't think it was a such a thing, but it is a thing, okay? A narcissistic person, a personality disorder, um, they, if their brains are looked at under an MRI, they lack the area where empathy would be in a normal functioning brain per se, that empathy would light up. They don't have it. Something, something um, happened, right? For them where they lack the ability to have true empathy for someone else. Now they can, they can mimic false empathy for their purposes, but the true empathy that would cause one to alter how they conduct and behave towards another human being without any expectation of a return of, of a good or service, right? Okay. Um, narcissist has to be the center of attention all the time. They fear um, <laughs> um, they can't share the limelight. They live in scarcity. So it, it's really, you got to look into it. I mean, I started diving into it so I can understand what was going on with the type of people that I was attracting into my world. Um, not only romantically, but in every area of my life, I noticed a theme. And I was just like, I'm the common denominator, right? So I'm like, well, well what, why? You know, you kind of start, well, why? Like, what is, what is this, right? So I started digging. What happened? What's wrong? Okay, I became what's called a classic codependent type. And I know we don't like that term. But, you know, if you were abused, neglected, you grew up with alcoholics, or you were abandoned, or, you know, a lot of the stuff, some of our cultures that we grew up in would classify, oh, that's just normal. You know, we were told so many things, so we just kind of chucked it up as, that's normal, everybody, family, you know, uh, no, it's not really normal. You were just told that it's normal, right? You were kind of 
hold, whether, you know, directly or indirectly, one way or the other, right? Um, if you were taught that the, the self wasn't important, you were taught that you were objectified, your purpose was to please, whether it was pleasing parents, grandparents, other people, all sorts of things kind of go into that, which makes us a target for people with these personality disorders because it's all energy. Something else that I discovered on this journey. We're energy, but I've always kind of wondered about all that anyway since I was a little girl. Okay, we're energy. I mean, haven't you ever wondered why if you go to the hospital and if your heart stops, why, why do they get those, the thingy my bobbies, right? And why do they get the thingy my bobbies and then they put it there and they go clear, you know, like, haven't you ever wondered? It's electricity, it's energy, right? Okay, heart and brain. I'm not gonna get into the dynamic of the heart right now. This, the research that I found and listened to the various videos of great minds and, and people that I so admire <laughs> and they are indirectly my mentors and people I aspire. Oh my God. Okay, <laughs> but the mind, okay? Narcissistic abuse how it affects people, okay? And where did my passion, you know, come from? And where am I going with all of this? And what is my desire with these videos? And what am I hoping to have happen? Well, I'm here to provide information, which I know is a lot of information out there, but hopefully encouragement and hope and support for women like me that just might click on my little, little old me's video. Listen. Narcissistic abuse is unique, especially when it's not the kind that you can see on someone's face or body or something that you can just clear cut explain. It's very, it's very, very um, spiritual in a way, dark, incognito. Um, they're clever, they don't, they're not aware of some of what they do. Um, very manipulative, gaslighting, and all this stuff ends up affecting your body, which makes you feel crazy. Which oftentimes could cause you to act out of character. Long-term exposure to that is wear and tear, high cortisol. I'm gonna share some resources at the end of this that's gonna be the starting point of helping base, what I wanna say is base one. I'm calling it base one because the first thing that's gotta happen for someone that is recovering or in the journey of recovery and coming out, body. Because this is all out of whack, right? You don't feel too good. Okay, your brain, your psyche, your emotions, everything is taking a hit. And we live in a world that unfortunately is not real sensitive to all of that. And some of us are single moms. Some of us have um, children of special needs. We got all sorts of things, demands. We're in workforce with more narcissists and other crazies. And I mean, excuse me, special beings <laughs> and you know it's a lot right and so base one is the body and I, I did some research as, as I mentioned that it's gonna help get some of the things in order of your with your body that's gonna also then as a domino effect help you with getting some other things to the mind the emotion, body, mind, emotion. Because you gotta have the, the, the body's gotta have a some level of good functionality for you to recover, for you to even process, for you for you to even deal with the mess 
the, the, re, the, the journey and the recovery process because see, quite honestly, all of this, what I'm saying and what I'm going to say here and now in future videos can seem very overwhelming. Like, forget it. Because um, I ain't got no energy for all that. Okay? Life goes on and folks ain't got time. You know, I, I know I know that feeling where you're like, okay, uh, I have to do things. Ain't nobody got time, you know. I even made a statement in my journey and I said, <laughs> you know, I said, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, I said, look, I ain't got it like that at this point in time in history of my life financially where I can just sit up and, and retreat and, and whatnot and just, you know, close off from the world and go in the woods and heal. Would be nice. But I don't have it like that. I was clowning, being sarcastic. Because the world that I live in, you know, I, I didn't have a good social circle or network of folks. You know, some folks, listen to me. Listen. Some people have an, a nice circle around them. Okay? They have a nice circle, whether it's their, their, their mother, father, sister, brother, uncle, aunt, cousin, homeboy, homegirl from back in the day. Um, you know what I'm saying? They crew, whatever you label it. Some people have that where they got a network of people that they really trust, that they re really know, that really love and support them, that, that's really there for them, that's going to help them truly, consistently, through the process, right? Some of us don't have that, okay? A lot of us feel like we're aliens in a, in, you know, in a world of folks that's just like glazed over by the eyes, you know, where it's like y'all's, you, know, <laughs> you know, you know, we feel, we feel like that, you know, we, we got to, we disconnected from family because we felt like the family was the problem. And unfortunately, a lot of folks, the first thing they want to ask you is family. And it's like, you you want to send me into the narcissistic world, you know? And then they'll, and then some want to send you into a religion. And then, and some well-meaning people, but the problem when you're dealing with narcissistic abuse and recovery and a lot of this stuff and then spiritual awakening, oftentimes you feel like Folks just don't get it. They don't get it. Even well-meaning and intending folk, they just don't get it. And oftentimes they end up saying and doing things that make, make it worse because they're not inside of you, okay? They're not inside of your body. They don't feel where the adrenal, where adrenal failure is on the making because of so much abuse in your life. So they don't, they don't see, they're not living inside of you to, to walk out the effects of that on your body, okay? Because that's real. That's actually physiologically real. It's not your imagination, okay? You're not crazy, it's not your imagination. You're not being extra, you're not being drama, you're not being all these things that they typically tend to label people who have gone through this because they don't they're not knowledgeable in this up until recent times even the world of behavioral health wasn't all of that equipped in handling people who had dealt with narcissistic abuse they didn't get it they found out in some studies recently that it's that the same chemicals are going off in a survivor um, as that of one coming off of heroin. Go figure. Okay? So, and it's, for whatever reason, there is a, some kind of weird dynamic. Okay? Um, so, I just want to be hopefully informative on some of the things I'm going to be sharing here. 
um, in sharing my story because I'm going to be raw and uncut. I'm, I am raw and uncut. I'm going to share my personal journey and my story and what's been helpful to me, what I've um, experienced, what I've learned, um, and hopefully encouraging, supportive, um, and just reinforcing that you're not alone and you're not crazy. And um, for those of you who don't have the support and you feel like, okay, I don't have a million dollars at this time to go pay for the best team of counselors and therapists and doctors. I don't have, you know, um, a support system that gets me and understands. I don't have, you know, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. And you can make it. But let's start with um, base one. Like I said, it's the body, okay? And then um, all of the greats that I've listened to, they all tend to have a theme and, and they say, um, contrary to a lot of the things we have been taught, we need to embrace and accept instead of resist. Embrace and accept our feelings, all range of emotion and feelings about what we've gone through. It's okay um, to accept it, to embrace it, and not deny the reality of how it has affected us, you know. Um, to forgive. I know that's all, honestly, that all sounds um, a little bit more easier said than done. I can say that um, for myself. But however many times we have to do it, sometimes it's just the um, getting ourselves to sit still long enough, to steal moments, and to be present with whatever that is that's being triggered. Let the pain or whatever that emotion is come and forgive ourselves, forgive um, the offenders, for ourselves so that we can get the negative energy because it's it's all energy and this is something I'm realizing all of it is energy it's energy so the anger the rage the the frustration the the um, offense it's all energy and it's not that it's bad or good it's just that it needs to to be felt acknowledged expressed released surrendered let go and breathing through it the deep breaths breathing 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 and one baby step at a time because sometimes it's difficult you know we're not used to especially if you are part of a culture that you know what you were not taught that we you were kind of taught that you don't matter <laughs> in a way okay so those are some of the base level of things we do to start our recovery from narcissistic abuse, okay? And it's gonna change the energy we have inside. Um, that's the, 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 the road of recovery, to, to learn to love ourselves, to learn what we've never really learned, to learn to um, have a self-identity instead of looking on the outside, but to be okay with that, no matter how old we are, that we feel lost, we feel detached, um, letting go of belief systems, that that's gonna be a little disorientating, I'm gonna say that. Woo! When, when, when you get to those levels and processes when it's time for you, but that's going to be helpful because back to the subconscious it governs over 90 percent of our our behavior our actions what we're attracting what we accomplish we can't get past it i said that in a video i think i did on youtube a while ago a long while ago actually i didn't even realize what i was saying in depth because i was coming from a different place and season of my life at the time but it makes perfectly clear sense. We can't get past 
our own system of belief. No matter how real or true something is, you can only live your truth, yours, because your truth is your reality. Trippy, isn't it? You can't get past it. For those of us that are, are Bible believers that would read writings of Jesus and, and um, many other philosophers and proverbs and things like that, it's actually there too. As a man thinks. Life and death is in words, what you say, word, bond, what you say. So, it, but subconscious governs that though. Not our conscious self, our subconscious, and we were programmed, listen, we were programmed. I'm going to get in depth into that on a whole nother video, but programmed. We were born our, come on, think about that. Then as time proceeded, where we start having our own experiences, depending on what those experiences have been, it just reinforced maybe some of the negatives. Now we gotta undo, but it's gonna have to be done on a subconscious level, sound, through sound, basically through sound, subliminal messages, and a subconscious state for the most part is the part of the process of that which is a part of what I plan to do here. Not myself, but just by sharing, you know, the resources that I find. Um, and in time, depending on, you know, how life goes, um, my desire to have a narcissistic abuse recovery program. And in that, I think I've mentioned before on a video, care packages for people and these care packages starter kits will have just your very basic set the the basic um things you need to start your recovery process from salt um epsom salt baths soaks to meditation audio things subliminal messages on certain sound um waves and um things like that that I found out about, to um, peak Himalayan salt lamps, to aromatherapy, to affirmations. I mean, you all have heard and seen many of these things already. I mean, we are in the information age, and so this is also part of my mission and passion and heart's desire because I want people to know as well that this stuff is real, and it's far beyond, you know, it's far beyond what we look at. It's not just the domestic relationships. It's this stuff has happened to many people and it started in childhood. It's happening in the workforce. I desire to see some things change and the, just the approach even, you know, to therapy, the approach to how we're helping people out there, um, even in terms of single moms or single dads, you know, because we expect the way society is set up, we expect these people to go out there and just live life and do things. And But we don't even address or even look at the reality. Like, we need to make sure they're okay. Like, do we care about that? And then we send them right out into another. <laughs> do we care about that? But see, I can't really get into some of the other things in which I know on this video right now because... The matrix you know but I care amongst there's many that care many empaths um, you know people that care you know and want to see people helped 
to, and, and, and for people to be informed and to know, like, you know what, you need to know you're not crazy. You need to know that you're not alone. You need to know that this is, that this is real, that, you know, it's real. And that these are some of the things that can help you, can help you recover. And my desire is also to hopefully bridge communities. What I'm discovering is that there is a lot of narcissistic support groups, recovery groups and things like that online. I would like to see a bridge where um, there's a lot more meets in person. You know how they have these alcohol anonymous groups, these Al-Anon groups, and they, they, these people meet up daily, weekly. They have these groups, you know, within cities. And, and I noticed that there's not, I don't know of any of these kind of groups. I'm like, you know, a part of the problem with recovery, uh, narcissistic abuse recovery individuals is they feel so alone. You know, and sometimes they do, at some point they get tired of connecting with the computer. Or, you know, they go online and they go into the support group online, and which is wonderful, it's something. But sometimes you do, you want to be around people because that's been a part of the problem because one of the primary things narcissistic people tend, typically tend to do is isolate you. They like that you stand alone. The moment that they see that you don't stand alone, they start losing their power, you know. Um... And so that's something else I'm hoping to see th that will come as a result of some of the things that I do here as it grows, when it grows. But really, this is feeding me too because as Ralph Smart said, you know, you're doing what you love, what you, you know, were born for, what you were created for. You know, you're sharing your heart, you're sharing your journey, you're sharing your story. You know, and um, and I care, you know, those of you out there that, you know, are experiencing or have experienced what I've gone through and, you know, you're trying to recover. Just know none of us are perfect. You know, it's you have your good days, your not so good days. It's a journey, you know, but you keep getting up. You know, you keep trying again, like Ralph says, and many others, because others say the same thing. That's what I'm finding. You know, get out in nature. If you're an empath, you're already inclined to nature anyways. But, but, you know, that's a part of grounding. That's a part of reconnecting with yourself, right? Um, find a way to do it. Just get some fresh air. Just take a walk. Look at the sun. Not, I mean, not stare directly. Your eyes hurt. But, you know, just... Those little steps to get you get you back to you and connecting and, and healthy and that vitamin D, right? Natural vitamin D, right? Amen. Um, and then start, you know, we've been so used to denying our own intuition. We've been taught that, right? But start paying attention to those feelings, you know, like, hmm. Because we deserve, listen, we deserve to feel good. And I know we're not used to that. We've been in performance overdrive for so long, worrying about making sure everybody else feel good, right? But we deserve to feel good. We deserve to, to make ourselves feel good, first of all. But we deserve to surround ourselves too with people that's gonna make us feel good. And it's okay for us to, to disconnect on some level or put a, a, a healthy boundary from people that for whatever reason they don't. And I'm not talking about you know paranoia stuff. I'm saying like when you get a vibe, empaths, intuitive people, you know, you get a sense like, mm, or people that are literally tearing you down, you know. Negative Nancy's or negative, you know, Negan or whatever. Or they just takers, you know, from you or whatever. Um, 
and only want to be bothered with you on, on their terms, you know, but have nothing to give you, you know, like start paying attention because we deserve to be loved, to be valued, right? Okay. And um, know that as we start loving ourselves more, paying ourselves more attention, going after our passions, our energetic field is going to change and then we're going to start to attract more and more of what we really desire, right? Okay. I think I've spoken a long time. That's something you guys are going to discover about me and I'm, I'm trying to work on that. Um, I've got a lot of um, oddities, but that's something you guys are going to discover. Like she can talk. Homegirl, she can talk. Nothing else. She talks. Um, but... Waity though, I got something to say. At least it ain't nonsense. I'll tell you that. Um, so, until next time, know that you're not alone. Know that you are worthy of love, worthy of a life worth living. It's not too late. Okay? You can do this. You can do this. Connect to nature, get some fresh air, take some baby steps, start with base one. Some vitamins that you need to start with is magnesium, ashwagandha, calcium, zinc, vitamin D, maca, moringa, um, spirinella, coronella. Um, I think those are some of the basic ones. Of course, vitamin C and B12. Um, okay. That's, those are some of the things in wheatgrass, if you have access to wheatgrass. Um, those are some of the things you need to start with to, uh, get your adrenals back in order. Okay. Um, which is a system that is heavily hit from narcissistic abuse. Okay. That helps your metabolic system um, and things like that. It, is, it helps in a major way. Ashwagandha is another uh, major one. That Wow. That helps with depression, um, stress, so many different things. Um, magnesium is another good one for that. So, yeah, as I said, those are some basic vitamins too. Um, you can get those things at Walmart. Okay, um, some you may have to go to Trader Joe's or Sprouts or um, a farmer's market um, or a vitamin place. Okay, um, but those are some of the things um, that you can start with. Turmeric is probably another good one. Okay, I'm taking probably all of those on some level. I think I'm out of turmeric. Um, my spirinella, I have in a shake form. And I want a powder form and I put it in a shake with my flax, um, flax seed milk, protein milk that I take with the spirinella. Um, and so, and then I have concentrated wheatgrass shots that I take in the morning, like two tablespoons or something like that. Um, so those are some things that you can start with okay just to kind of start helping your body feel a little bit better okay and then some walks five ten minutes depending on your level of, of physical ability and activity okay some walks right um, exercise bike you know just to get your body moving a little bit if you're not used to it you're exercising okay plenty of alkaline water major fan of alkaline water okay um, and it's a reason for that. Bring the body to balance. Okay. Um, let's see what else I got on that. Let's see. Yeah, those are some very, that's a starting point. I'm not going to get deep into all the other stuff. Because, again, it can be overwhelming. So, the vitamins, basic walking, right? Alkaline water. A little lemon. If you got some little lemon, you right. Okay. Let's start there. Okay. You can do this. Okay. We can do this. 
we, okay? Because I'm on this journey. I'm still on this journey, right? Okay? Y'all, I want I want to leave Las Vegas. So, um, um, I'm trying to make that move, make that transition. So, y'all root for me. That's because I, you know, I, I really don't think this is the place for me. Vegas is interesting. I think this, this may be the place for some people. But high sensitive empaths, I don't know. Unless you're really, really called to this place, I don't know. You know, you really got to, you know. Um, but, okay, anyways, until next time, all right, go for yours. It's not too late. Okay, stay up, stay focused, stay positive, connect with like-minded people, connect with reciprocal relationships. All right, take care. Bye. Well, I think bye. Let's see here.